Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, we're gonna make some spring pancakes. Or mushu pancakes as uh, I grew up knowing them as. Um, these are the pancakes that you would use for dishes like uh, mushu pork or picking duck. Um, and I'm actually making mushu pork today, which is why I'm making these pancakes. So uh, in another video, I will show you how to make that mushu pork. But for these pancakes, um, so we're gonna start on a scale with 280 grams of all-purpose flour. Now let's see if we have 280 grams. Whew, just barely have it. All right, 280 grams. That's about one packed cup of all-purpose flour. Okay. And then to that, I'm gonna add 100 grams or 100 milliliters of boiling water or freshly boiled water, let's say. So the idea here is that um, by adding hot water to the flour, um, you are cooking some of the proteins in there. So you, you're sort of limiting how much gluten forms. Uh, and you know, gluten is the stuff that kind of gives um, dough, bread dough and stuff, it's a strength. Um, and so the idea here is that if you don't use boiling water, if you just used all cold water, you develop a lot of gluten in here and then the, um, the dough becomes very sort of uh, uh, elastic, it becomes very hard to stretch out, not very malleable. Um, but by using a combination of hot water, you know, boiling water, cooking out some of that gluten, and then adding cold water to it, you limit its elasticity. Um, and you'll see when we start rolling this dough out, it's gonna become, it's gonna be very, very uh, loose and easy to roll. So half and half, 100 milliliters of uh, boiling water, 100 milliliters, of cold water and you can see I'm sort of adding it in a stream here just to incorporate it evenly okay and get it all in there at the end and now right now all I'm going to try and do is kind of get this into a very rough ball so I don't want all this dry flour that's around the edges of the bowl I want to kind of incorporate all that and I want to get this very roughly homogenous, and then we're just going to kind of let it sit. And what's going to happen in that time is that the starch is going to fully hydrate. Okay, and uh, the gluten, any small amount of gluten that has, has formed, is going to uh, relax. And you'll see uh, when the dough, when we get back to it, how uh, how much the texture is going to change. So you can see it's like an extremely shaggy ball right now. So I'm going to take a clean dish towel. Okay. And I'm just going to lay it over the top, just like that, as such. Okay. Now, meanwhile, I'm going to work on my mushu pork ingredients, and I will come back to that in about half an hour. You can let it rest room temperature anywhere from half an hour up to a couple of hours. So uh, I will see you again in. About, it's actually only been about 20 minutes, but, um, so I sprinkled this with just a little bit of flour. You can see how smooth the dough's become. If I let it go for the full 30 minutes or even longer, a couple hours, it would be even smoother than this. But this is good enough uh, to get it going. So I'm gonna sprinkle my board with some flour. I'm using this pizza flour because I'm out of AP, all purpose. So sprinkle your board with some flour. Lay your dough out, okay. I'm gonna roll it into this log here. And you see how it's like almost like Play-Doh, how smooth and pliable that is. Um, so now we're gonna divide this up. I find the best way to divide dough evenly, instead of cutting out small balls and trying to measure them individually, what I like to do, uh, it's very easy for humans, at least I think, to visually cut things in half. So I like to try keeping my, uh, cutting it in half as many times as I can. So I'm gonna start by cutting it in half once, okay? And I'm gonna lay the two ends side by side. I'll roll them out a little more, stretch them out a little more. And out of this, we're gonna get, you know, either 12 sort of largest pancakes or, you know, up to like 30, 36 very small pancakes. I'm gonna cut this out in half again. Okay, so now I've got four. All I care is that their middles are roughly aligned and I'm gonna cut them in half. And then each one of these I can cut into two. So I end up with what, 16 little dough balls, I think. 
So this hot water dough, by the way, is the same type of dough you would use to make like scallion pancakes. Same type of dough you could use for dumpling wrappers. Has a wide variety of uses. But the trick for making mandarin pancakes, this is the fun part. This is the part I remember sort of doing with my dad when I was a kid, was you roll it into a ball, okay? Take another one, roll it into a ball. Like that. Okay, and then you kind of want to flatten them out until they're about that size, you know, the size of like a, uh, what is that the size of? A very small coaster. A coaster for a highball glass. A couple inches. six centimeters maybe, all right? So you wanna stack them like that, right? You want them to be the roughly the same size. So now I'm gonna take my sesame oil here. Just a little dab will do. A little bit of extra flour. And I'm gonna rub them around like this, okay? And the idea here is that you can only get your pancakes so thin by rolling it out on its own. But if you stack two of them together and then you roll them out, you can get them to be half the thickness that you can get just a single pancake. And the idea is that that oil layer in between is gonna prevent them from uh, sticking together. So you'll see what happens when we uh, cook this. Let's get a little more flour there. I like using these tapered rolling pins. This one is from uh, the friends at Earlywood. All right, so we're almost like, almost at the limit of what I can do. You know, if you're much more skilled than me, you can probably get this thinner. Some people like to stack even more pancakes on top of each other. You know, they'll do three or four pancakes stacked on top of each other. Um, I'm gonna stick with just the two though. Now, I'm gonna go into a preheated skillet. Not super high heat, this is kinda medium to medium low heat. I wanna try and get it in as, I do wanna try and get it in an even layer. This skillet's not quite big enough. If you have a griddle, um, that works even better. Uh, but today I just grabbed the skillet. Oh, straighten out you. There you go. All right, and you should immediately start to see it kind of puffing a little bit like that. And we'll cook the second side. That's all it really takes, you know, 20 seconds. We're not looking for any sort of big blisters or charred spots. We're basically just looking to cook the rawness out of it. Almost there. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna set this on the cutting board. I'll just cover with a lid so that it kind of steams, actually this one fits a little better. Traps the steam in there, um, and that'll let them sort of stay moist while I make the other ones. All right, I won't bore you with making all the rest of these on camera, but I will uh, make the other 14 and stack them and then I'll show you what happens at the end, okay? So I'll be back in. All right, so these are done. So if you do it right, you should be able to now separate them with sort of minimal tearing. Of course, since I'm doing this on camera, they probably are gonna tear, but eh, this one looks okay. We're gonna make it all the way. We're gonna make it all the way. Oh, there we go. Tiny little hole, but you get the idea. And so what you end up with is pancakes that should be 
you know, thin enough that you can pretty much see through them. All right, there you go. Spring pancakes for mushu pork. All right, so I'm gonna finish off this mushu pork now. Um, that's a separate video. Again, I'll link to it, um, but anyhow. Um, oh, here, home on. All right, guys, gals, non-binary pals, I'll see you next time.